Hello everyone, welcome to the Cloud Inspired channel. So today we are going to talk about Microsoft Power Pages and show a simple step-by-step -step guide on how to create a Power Pages website within this video. So here's an example of the website that we will step through to create as an end goal within this video. Links are in the description for full documentation as shown and other pages discussed and shown within this video. So creating websites in Microsoft Power Pages is simple and doesn't need lots of developer experience to do this. We will show you how. So whether you're just starting out or a professional developer, Power Pages enables you to simply create, configure and publish websites that seamlessly work across web browsers and mobile devices. So let's get started, but before we do, please subscribe to the channel and hit that like uh, button to receive future notifications on up and coming videos. Thank you. So you can sign up for a free 30 day trial using a work or school email address associated with your Microsoft account. So to use a personal email to start a new trial, you will need to set up a new work or school account. You can set up a new work or school account by signing up for a new Microsoft 365 E3 or Dynamics 365 um, sales or customer service trial with your personal email. The links are in the description um, to point you in the right direction with this. So a trial is useful for trying out Power Pages capabilities at no cost. So after it expires, the site is suspended and shut down and then the trial site is deleted. The trial site can be converted into a paid production site from the Power Pages Admin Center if you have the required licenses at extra cost. So let's sign up for the trial by entering our email address. And then let's log into Microsoft Power Pages and get started. So once we are now logged in, let's jump straight in and create a website. So we have three options here. No, I've never built a site before. Yes, I've created one and I build them professionally. So we will choose the simplest for this demo and select no, I've never built one before. We can use the supplied templates, which makes life uh, a lot easier. There's a selection, as you can see, uh, and we will use the default. The preview shows us what this will look like uh, across desktop devices and mobile devices. So let's choose this template to build our website. So give the site a name and choose a web address. So this is the address we will access our site on the internet. So in this case, for this trial and demo, it will be cloudinspired.powerappsportals.com. So click done and then wait for a few moments for the site to be built and set up. So that's all set up. So this is the main portal where we perform our configuration of the template and make it our own into our own website. And as you can see, we have a template ready for us to amend to change for our new website. So let's start by changing the company name by clicking on the existing name and editing it to the new name of our site. On the bar that's displayed, this is common throughout the Power Pages uh, portal where we can change the background color, the layout starting as a single column to two, three displays, etc. And we can change to horizontal or virtual, change the sizes of the page if needed. So we will delete the first column shown here and change things around a bit just to show you what's available. So let's add a column times three by clicking the plus in the middle of the screen as shown. So we now have the option to add different components. We will just show you some examples here and then move stuff around later on. So first of all, we will add some text. Let's now add an image so we can choose one for the image library or we can upload our own. Let's upload our own uh, as an example image. So 
So we will now add a YouTube video as a component. So let's add the address of the video for it to display correctly. Let's change the size of the text that we created earlier. And, and actually, in fact, let's choose a two column layout instead of a three. Let's now delete our image on the right and add it back in on the left column. We can now add a link button to the external web page and we will add our image to the left again with the text and we will re-add our YouTube video to the right. So this makes the text, image and video in a more compact two column display. We will now move this whole section down the page as well. So the introduction shows right at the top of the page. Uh, and also let's move uh, by cutting and pasting the text into the introduction section. We're going to upload our company logo and delete the empty text component that's no longer in use. And we will also change the top spacer colour background. Let's add a spacer to the bottom section of the introduction section and choose the same background colour. Let's now have a look at pages and sub pages. So at the top of the template, we have home pages with sub pages. We have the contact us page. So to change and edit these pages, we can select or add them to the left. In this case, we selected sub page one on the right and this has opened the page ready for editing. To add another sub page let's go to the pages on the left and choose add a new sub page. Enter a name and choose the layout required. Click add. So sub page three is then visible on the right, ready to edit. And it's also shown on the main uh, template under pages at the top. So let's add another page called videos and drag this up to change a display where it's positioned on the top menu. We can move now from pages to styling on the left hand side of the portal page. So here we can change the colors of the template and have a wide range of palette colors to choose from along with fonts and headers. Let's move down into data on the left under styling. And here we can add custom tables and forms to use in our web page. As an example, I'm going to add uh, a ticket page to log uh, tickets of issues um, within a platform. So let's start uh, with adding a new table called tickets request. This table will be used for a new page. So add a column. And in this example, we will add custom columns called platform and issue for users to submit the text later on in the form. So 
So if we click on the Forms tab, if we give it a name, and then we can select our custom columns we created earlier. Click the Add field and click Issue and Platform. And then we can save and publish. OK, so now that we have created our form, let's go back to the pages and add a new web page for the ticket request. We can now add our form ticket component to this page. Click form, new form and search for the table we created earlier. So we have options around how data is created and managed. We will just choose the default for now. We will change the message that's displayed after submission. And we will use our capture for anonymous and authenticated users. Click OK and that's our form page added now for our user ticket requests. So actually I'm going to include an email column to add to the form and move some other column positions around um, and remove some that, that are no longer needed. So after that's done, let's preview the whole website now to see how it's looking. Let's try and access a form by clicking table request. And as you can see, we need to add permissions as we don't have access right now. So let's go back to the form page, click permissions. We can add a new permission. We can enter a name and choose the access type and the permissions required. And when we're done, we click save and that should now give us access. OK, so let's check out the form now. So we can now edit some details. Uh, we can click Submit and we can see our custom message is, is now displayed. To show where the data is stored and submitted from, the, from this form, so we can go back to the Data tab uh, and our Ticket Request table, we can see the data uh, and item from Fred that was just submitted. We can use different built-in identity providers for account login. This is integrated, which is great, and can be shown by clicking the sign-in page. So we can use a local login or uh, an Azure Active Directory login to integrate with your cloud Azure AD identity. So this is controlled on the Setup tab, where we can enable and disable providers for local sign-in, Azure Active Directory, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. So we can also see table permissions and there are other functionality coming soon, uh, as we can see, so watch this space. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to help grow the channel and get notification of future up and coming videos. Okay, take care and bye for now.